How's it going guys? It's been a little while since I made a video here and I missed the series with Minnesota and uh, Baltimore making the video that is and I watched the series. So I'm not going to get too in depth about the twin series because that's old news. That's a few games already ago. But Tigers, all you need to know is that the Tigers took that series, took two or three games. It was a first series, three game series on the road win since the last time when they swept the Astros in Houston. So it's been a long time. Uh, it was nice to see the Tigers cap off the road trip uh, at a positive note. Uh, you know, they haven't been playing that great on the road this year, but they did pretty good. Uh, they took uh, game one, Porcello pitched a gem, uh, and then the Tigers actually hit up Scott Diamond that game. And in game two, they lost 6-3. <clears throat> and then game three, Doug Fister pitched a gem against P.J. Walters, and Joaquin Benoit earned himself the save. And we're going to get into that here in a minute, too. Game and now we get into the series of Baltimore. Max Scherzer pitched an absolute gem to get to ten and zero. First pitcher, uh, this is like nineteen oh nine to do that or whatever. Uh, or no, first pitcher with his strikeouts per nine to get to ten and zero uh, since like nineteen hundred whatever or something like that. I forget what the specifics were. Uh, uh, the Tigers hit up Jake Arrieta pretty good. And then game two, Zach Britton went up against Justin Verlander, and Verlander looked. Absolutely horrific. It's coming to the point, guys, where I've made the realization of this. A few weeks ago, I heard a buddy of mine on the Detroit Tigers Facebook page that I'm a part of make a statement that the Verlander we know, the inhuman Verlander, guy we expect seven innings, two earned runs, you know, eight Ks from, is just over with. I was watching this video I made from back in 2011 after Verlander won the Cy Young. And I was completely blown away at, at how Verlander looks now compared to then. I mean, that was only two years ago, you know, and he's only 30. But the late life on his fastball, there's something about a guy when they throw hard. But, like, Verlander, he has been throwing harder his last few starts. He's been hitting 98. But it's a flat 98. There's no extra explosion on the ball, no late life at the, at the end of it. Now, if, if you don't know what I mean, I'm going to leave it in the bottom of the description a link to Roger Clemens' first 20 strikeout game against the Seattle Mariners. It's a great game if you've never saw it. And when Roger, when Roger Clemens would throw a fastball in this game, it was like the ball exploded out of his hand and on just on a straight line, just boom, right in the catcher's glove. Just like, like you drew an, a straight line completely to the glove. The ball never shifts off that surface. But it just explodes so fast to the mitt. The catcher sets a pair, just shoof, right there. Watching this video of Verlander in 2011, when he was still throwing really hard consistently late in the games and throughout the game, you know, he was throwing 95, 97, 98, you know. And I didn't like him throwing that hard that early, but... You know, he was still cranking it up, and the late life in the command was just so pinpoint to the corners. And, while, you know, I know this was his MVP year in 2011, but watching his slider, like how out of much of a dime he could throw it, you know, on the outside black, and his curveball, and just his changeup. The days of those Verlander days are over. You know, I just, I've come to the realization of it, that it's over. He's... He has completely changed his style of pitching. And I think I know why. Because he just signed that huge contract extension, and he knows he's going to be pitching here in Detroit at least eight more years. And I think he's trying to save some bullets in his arm. Uh, you know, even though he's still really young, 30 is not old whatsoever, but I think he's trying to save some of those 98s for a little bit later down the line when he's 34, 35, and he can still pitch well. And I think right now he's in a process of a changing period, and it's really inflating his numbers. You know, it's been a while since we saw Verlander with an ERA approaching four, a whip of 1-3. You know, it's been a long time since he's looked hittable, and guys actually look like they have a chance against him. Excuse me. Um, but it's it's just happening, and, and I think it's just because he signed this huge contract, and he's really trying to reinvent himself to... Uh, you know, save himself for a while. And I've come to the realization of this, and it took me a while, but I think that's what it is. And he looked awful. J.J. Hardy has absolutely destroyed him this year. Uh, and then game three, Rick Porcello finally looked human. Uh, we all knew that he was bound to come back down, and the Orioles had their way with him. So, today, 
Leland kind of named Benoit the closer. Uh, he said he will go to Benoit when he's healthy and available. Now, I don't ever remember Benoit having any health problems, so I don't know why that's a concern. But available, let's see how much he uses him in the 8th. Let's see how much Smiley gets used in the 8th now. Uh, hopefully, this is for good. Because Jose Valverde absolutely got shit on his last time out. He allowed four runs on five hits his last outing. And he's just, like I said, you keep throwing that one pitch, one pitch, hitters. You know, hitters are missing it early. Not anymore. He's getting absolutely destroyed. Uh, so hopefully Benoit stays in as closer because I cannot stand Valverde there anymore. And he just needs to be done. And Benoit is by far the better option. So we open up a four-game set. Against the Boston Red Sox, who are been playing pretty good baseball this year, like I said they would. I have a good friend on here named Mike, Bo Sox Nation 2012. Um, looking forward to seeing his preview video for this series. Uh, he's a diehard Red Sox fan. Subscribe to him if you haven't. But his boys are coming into Comerica where they don't usually they don't usually play super well, but they play decent. And uh, so game one is going to be Pedro Alvarez taking. Uh, the spot of the injured Anibal Sanchez is going up against John Lackey, who's had a very good year. Uh, and then game two is going to be Dougie Fresh against John Lester. Lester has really, 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 really been struggling lately. Uh, you know, he started out the year really good, but now he's just been getting absolutely lit up his last few starts. Um, and then game three is Max Scherzer uh, going to post, uh, try to get to posting a perfect 11-0 rec record against Webster. I've never heard of this Webster kid before, Alan Webster, uh, so I can't really give you anything I know about him because I have no idea. And then JV is going up against Felix Dubrant to cap off the series. And Dubrant's a guy that likes to nibble on the corners a lot. Uh, he's a guy that, uh, you know, you can get him out early in games because of how much he nibbles on the corners. But hopefully the Tigers, you know, take three or four of the series because they need a series win. You know, they typically play really good at home. Just the other day, where the Tigers lost two straight against the Orioles to lose the series. It was the second time all year they've lost back-to-back -back home games. So it shows you how good they play at home. So hopefully they take three or four from the Red Sox. I wouldn't be too mad at a split, but I, I want to see three or four taken from these guys. Verlander needs to step up his game. Uh, and hopefully Alvarez pitches good because he's, he, he did pretty good for Sanchez because uh, him and Avila, both went, uh, Avila and Sanchez both went on the 15-day DL. Avila's not lost whatsoever, but Sanchez is because he's been pitching good baseball. So that's all I got for you guys today. Make sure you watch the Roger Clemens video to show to, to know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about exploding fastball. Have a good one, guys.